following program is produced by the Living Church of God. Since September 11, 2001, national governments have warned not only against terrorism, but of regional nuclear wars. The 20th century experienced two world wars. Will we now, in the 21st century, see World War III? What does Bible prophecy say? Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World The Living Church of God presents Dr. Roderick C. Meredith Richard Ames Bringing you the good news of your future in tomorrow's world This week, Richard Ames explores World War III and prophecy and now, Richard Ames. Warm greetings to you all. On September 11, 2001, terrorists attacked the United States on its own soil. They flew hijacked airliners into the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and into the two skyscrapers comprising the World Trade Center in New York City. The Business Week magazine cover declared it an act of war. The Economist magazine cover proclaimed this event as the day the world changed. The Wall Street Journal reported a shaken representative, Kurt Weldon, Republican of Pennsylvania, said, quote, this is 21st century war. My friends, in the 20th century, we suffered two world wars. Now in the 21st century, will we suffer World War III? What does Bible prophecy reveal? Our regular viewers of this program and readers of our bi-monthly magazine, Tomorrow's World, understand the basic framework of end-time prophecy. They've seen that the prophet Daniel, for example, accurately predicted the world-ruling empires of Persia, Greece, and Rome. Some of Daniel's prophecies yet remain, and they actually give us information about World War III. Other prophecies in the book of Revelation or the Apocalypse harmonize with Daniel's prophecies. The greatest newscaster of all time, Jesus of Nazareth, revealed one of the fundamental prophecies of the Bible. He gave us the signs and trends leading up to the end of this age and the end of mankind's destructive drive for world domination. Turn in your Bible to Matthew 24. This is the famous Olivet Prophecy, also recorded in Mark 13 and Luke 21. Jesus was on the Mount of Olives, just east of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. So it is called the Olivet Prophecy. Matthew 24, verse 3. Jesus' disciples asked him, What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. We should all look forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ, because it is only He who will save the world from world terrorism. He will usher in a new age and establish the kingdom of God on earth. We call that age tomorrow's world. What signs did Jesus give that will lead up to His second coming and the end of the age? Matthew 24, verse 4, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Here he is speaking of regional wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Christ himself will have to intervene to save us from total destruction. This is what he warns in Matthew 24, verse 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Bible prophecy clearly reveals that a World War III is coming. But even apart from Bible prophecy, history itself should teach us. Human nature has not improved over the past several thousand years. As General Douglas MacArthur stated in his significant speech at the end of World War II, quote, Military alliances, balances of power, leagues of nations, all in turn failed, leaving the only path to be the way of the crucible of war. The utter destructiveness of war now blocks out this alternative. We have had our last chance. If we will not devise some greater or more equitable system, our Armageddon will be at our door. 
My friends, we have not devised some greater and more equitable system. And surely, as MacArthur stated, our Armageddon will be at our door. Scientists who worked on the Manhattan Project, the World War II project that led to the first atomic bomb, founded the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. They established the Doomsday Clock as the symbol of nuclear danger. On February 27, 2002, the Board of Directors moved the minute hand of the Doomsday Clock from nine to seven minutes before midnight. They report, quote, since the end of the Cold War in 1991, this is the third time the hand has moved forward, end of quote. Reflecting on the bomb he had created, Manhattan Project physicist Robert Oppenheimer marveled, quote, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, end of quote. He was quoting from the Hindu text, the Bhagavad Gita. Oppenheimer later opposed development of the H-bomb, the hydrogen bomb, which is a thousand times more powerful than the atomic bomb. Oppenheimer feared that this knowledge, once acquired, would surely be used. As he told students at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, quote, the physicists have known sin, and this is a knowledge which they cannot lose, end of quote. Scientists certainly see danger on the horizon. Nuclear danger remains. In March 2002, the Pentagon updated Congress on its contingency plans to use nuclear weapons against certain countries that may threaten the United States. Barry Schweid for Associated Press wrote, quote, The Los Angeles Times reported Saturday that contingency plans are to be prepared for at least seven nations and that the report calls for building new, smaller nuclear weapons for use in certain battlefield situations. The report said the Pentagon needs to be prepared to use nuclear weapons against China, Russia, Iraq, North Korea, Iran, Libya, and Syria, according to the newspaper, end of quote. Will war never end? What is the cause of war? Your Bible reveals one of the basic causes of war in James 4, verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. Or as the King James Version states it, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Yes, the root cause of war is human nature. As the 19th century American president, Rutherford Burchard Hayes, observed, quote, Wars will remain while human nature remains. I believe in my soul in cooperation and arbitration. But the soldier's occupation, we cannot say, is gone until human nature is gone. End of quote. My friends, as long as we do not replace human nature with God's nature, we will have war. And with man's penchant to invent even more powerful weapons of mass destruction, it's easy for statesmen to predict the probability of cosmicide, the loss of all life on planet Earth. As General MacArthur stated on the battleship Missouri at the end of World War II, quote, The problem basically is theological and involves a spiritual recrudescence and improvement of human character that will synchronize with our almost matchless advancements in science, art, literature, and all material and cultural developments of the past 2,000 years. It must be of the spirit if we are to save the flesh. End of quote. My friends, the Creator God has a plan of salvation. That plan includes a spiritual recrudescence or renewal. Through the Savior of the world, thousands of human beings are now being spiritually renewed or transformed. The Apostle Paul wrote this in Romans 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. True Christians are called to be the light of the world, the salt of the earth. They are called to be peacemakers, as it tells us in Matthew 5, verse 9. True Christians are now learning the way to peace, not the way to war. They will have the opportunity to rule with Christ and His kingdom in the not-too-distant future. 
You need to know what Bible prophecy says about that future. What events will lead up to World War III? And how will World War III end? Or will it even end before all life on planet Earth is killed? To help you in your study of the Bible, I'd like to offer you an exciting one-hour free audio tape entitled, The Day of the Lord. Over 30 prophecies in the Bible reveal future events in the prophetic time period called the Day of the Lord. The book of Revelation, or the Apocalypse, particularly gives details of this dramatic and prophetic time. You need to know what impact the Day of the Lord will have on your life. Just what is the Day of the Lord? Our free audio cassette will give you the answers from your Bible. It will help you understand the prophetic framework leading up to World War III and Armageddon and it'll help you in your study of Bible prophecy in your own time and at your own convenience. Just pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy. Call or write today for your free audio tape, The Day of the Lord. You can also order this audio tape on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. And if you're not already a subscriber to our bi-monthly magazine, Tomorrow's World, we'll send you a free subscription. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the deeper meaning of life itself. Be sure to request Tomorrow's World magazine. There's no cost or obligation. And be sure to request your free one-hour audio tape, The Day of the Lord, and Tomorrow's World magazine. Just call or write for your free audio tape, The Day of the Lord. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. Tomorrow's World Magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. On the first part of our program, we saw that the danger of nuclear war has even increased in the year 2002. Does Bible prophecy reveal that the nations will use the weapons of mass destruction? Let's see what the book of Revelation tells us about the sequence of events. In Revelation 6, we read about the famous four horsemen of the apocalypse. The first horse, the white horse, symbolizes false religion, as Jesus described in Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5, and in verse 24. Then, in Revelation 6, verse 4, we read about the red horse of war. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. When peace is taken from the earth, there will be great devastation and war. The third horse, the black horse of famine, adds to the suffering. Then in Revelation 6, verse 7, we read about the fourth horse, the pale horse of death. Revelation 6, verse 7. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. War and famine will directly devastate a fourth of the earth. The biblical symbol here in Revelation for war is the sword. The Apostle John uses first century language to describe 21st century warfare. For example, in the latter phase of World War III, during the Sixth Trumpet Plague, John describes a massive army invading west across the Euphrates River. Look on your Bible map, and you'll see that the Euphrates River runs from Turkey through Syria and Iraq to the Persian Gulf. Here is what John writes in Revelation 9 and verse 13. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. 
Now the number of the army of the horsemen was two hundred million. I heard the number of them. John sees in vision a massive invasion westward across the Euphrates River. And what will this army do to the populations of planet Earth? They will kill a third of mankind. My friends, at least two billion humans will be killed in this phase of World War III. We need to wake up. We need to seek God for life, protection, and salvation. Listen to what God is telling all of us through the prophet Isaiah. He's telling us to get our lives straightened out spiritually. Isaiah 55, verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Turn your life around. Ask God's forgiveness for your sins. You can be an exception to those God will judge during World War III. Our Western nations are continuing their downhill slide into immorality and anti-God attitudes and behavior, and God will judge us. We need to take warning. Jeremiah 30 and verse 7 is one of the several scriptures warning of an end-time tribulation. And who will bear the brunt of this tribulation? As we pointed out in previous programs, the descendants of Jacob, the American and British descended peoples of our Western nations. Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. This is a unique period in human history. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. God will punish our Western nations in World War III if we don't repent. But God is merciful. After national devastation and captivity, God will restore our humbled Western nations during the millennium under the rulership of the immortalized saints. Those ruling in the kingdom of God on earth will be Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Twelve Apostles, King David, who will rule over both the house of Israel and the house of Judah, and many other faithful saints. Continue in Jeremiah 30 and verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Eternal of hosts, that I will break his yoke from your neck and will burst your bonds, Foreigners shall no more enslave them, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. There's good news beyond the bad, but we need to understand the signs of the times, and we need to understand Bible prophecy. The United States is now the only superpower, but there's another superpower rising in Europe. Chapters 13 and 18 of Revelation describe the resurrection of a beast that will eventually dominate the world with its economic and military power. We've described that power in previous programs and in our literature as a resurrected Roman Empire. Daniel also refers to the end-time power as the king of the north in Daniel 11. Daniel 11 and verse 40. At the time of the end, the king of the south shall attack him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, horsemen, and with many ships. And he shall enter the countries, overwhelm them, and pass through. He shall also enter the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape from his hand, Edom, Moab, and the prominent people of Ammon. He shall stretch out his hand against the countries. The introductory phase of World War III will begin in the Middle East. The king of the north, not Russia, as we proved on a previous program, will enter the glorious land, the Holy Land. Notice, however, that this domination is not limited to the Middle East. Daniel states that many countries shall be overthrown, and he shall stretch out his hand against the countries. Could that mean the demise of our Western nations? Bible prophecy is clear. God loves all peoples. In that love, God will punish those who should know better. He will punish those who have misused the blessings of freedom for immoral and anti-God purposes. As we read in Jeremiah 30, verse 7, the great tribulation is the time of Jacob's trouble. That tribulation will lead into the prophesied day of the Lord, the time when God begins to intervene more powerfully with his judgments on the nations. This time of God's wrath on rebellious nations is preceded by frightening astronomical activity. Read about that in Revelation 6, and verse 12. 
I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, as a fig tree drops its late figs, when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? The day of the Lord includes the latter phases of World War III. You need to understand the sequence of events outlined in the books of Revelation and Daniel. To help you in your study of the Bible and your understanding of Bible prophecy, I'd like to offer you a free one-hour tape entitled, The Day of the Lord. This audio tape will give you the sequence of events and the significant signs you need to watch for. The theme of the book of Revelation is the return of Jesus Christ and the end-time events leading up to the coming kingdom of God on earth. The Apostle John describes the events leading up to the seventh trumpet in the prophetic time period known as the Day of the Lord. You need to know more about that prophetic time period. You need this exciting one-hour long audio tape, The Day of the Lord. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy. You can also order this audio tape on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. There's no cost or obligation. This audio tape will give you insights into the book of Revelation and deeper understanding of its mysterious symbols. Be sure to call or write for your free audio tape entitled, The Day of the Lord. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Near the end of World War III, an army of 200 million will move westward past the Euphrates River. They will kill one-third of mankind, over two billion human beings. Now let's continue with verse 17 of Revelation 9. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. And out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues a third of mankind was killed, by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents, having heads, and with them they do harm. Next will come the final battle of World War III. Jesus Christ and his armies will come to conquer the world's rebellious armies. That good news is announced in Revelation 11 and verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Yes, Jesus Christ is coming back to save humanity from self-destruction. But amazingly, the nations will still want to fight the conquering king of heaven's armies. Revelation, the 16th chapter, describes the seven last plagues poured out on humanity to humble it and to bring it to repentance. The sixth angel symbolically pours out the liquid on the Euphrates River for the last phase of World War III. This time, additional armies move westward over the Euphrates River. Revelation 16 and verse 12. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. 
And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Satan's demons, fallen angels, gather those armies that were about to annihilate one another in all life on earth. These opposing forces now join one another to fight against Christ at His coming. They gather at Megiddo, but they move southward to Jerusalem to fight Christ there. Notice Joel, the third chapter, and verse 1. Joel 3 and verse 1. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there. Those nations and peoples who survive Armageddon in World War III will have the opportunity to live in tomorrow's world, a millennium of peace under Christ's world-ruling government. Zechariah, the 14th chapter, shows that the returning king, Jesus Christ the Messiah, will establish his kingdom and peace will reign on the earth. Zechariah 14, verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the King, the Eternal of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. My friends, that's the good news beyond the bad. And many of you will live to see that wonderful kingdom in action. Zechariah 14, verse 9 states, And the Eternal, the Lord, shall be King over all the earth. World War III is coming. You need to know the framework of Bible prophecy and what lies ahead. Be sure to request your one-hour audio tape entitled, The Day of the Lord. It will help you understand the future, and it will help you prepare for the days ahead. Remember what Jesus said in Luke 21, verse 36? We need to be spiritually prepared. Luke 21, verse 36. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We invite you to join us every week on Tomorrow's World program. You need to know what the Bible reveals about the future. Dr. Meredith and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ and the exciting end-time prophecies and their meaning. So join us again next week right here at this same time. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. We invite you to visit our webpage at tomorrowsworld.org. of God.